Um, so abstractive summarization is when you generate novel sentences for the summary using, yes, natural language generation techniques. Okay, so as you can now see, um, I'm going to be using this uh, running metaphor of a pen and a highlighter. Hello? So um, extractive summarization is rather like a highlighter because you select the content you want to use as your summary. Whereas abstractive summarization is like a pen because you write in your own words. So extractive summarization is much easier because it's a much simpler problem to solve. However, it's too restrictive because, for example, you can't paraphrase the original text. For this reason, well, not for this reason, for the reason that it's easier, most past work has been extractive, even though it's quite restrictive. By contrast, abstractive summarization is much more difficult because generating natural language, uh, generating natural language is quite difficult. However, it's more flexible, and this is the way that humans summarize. I believe that abstractive summarization is necessary if we're going to make future progress on summarization. For this work, we focus on the CNN Daily Mail dataset. This consists of news articles from those news websites. So here's an example on the right in the context in which it originally appeared. These news articles are fairly long, about 800 words each, and each comes with a multi-sentence summary, usually about three or four sentences. These summaries contain information that's drawn from all over the article. So this means that it's quite a challenging problem. If you want to write these summaries, you need to read the whole article to get the information. In the last few years, the neural sequence-to-sequence -sequence method has become the state of the art for abstractive summarization. I'm going to quickly go over it now. So you have your source text, which in this example is, let's say, Germany emerged victorious in 2-0 win against Argentina on Saturday, etc. So that's fed into the encoder RNN, which in our example is a bidirectional LSTM. After that, the decoder, uh, starts to produce the summary. So if our partial summary is so far just the word Germany, then we produce the attention distribution. This is just a probability distribution over the source text. We use this to take a weighted sum of the encoder hidden states, and from that calculate the vocabulary distribution. And this is another probability distribution over all of the words in our vocabulary, let's say from A to Zoo. Lastly, we choose whichever word has the highest probability in the vocabulary distribution, and that's our output for this step. So if everything is working correctly, the idea is that we should be able to produce a word like beat, which doesn't actually appear in the source text, by attending to the related words victorious and win. By doing this repeatedly, you should be able to generate an abstract summary, like let's say Germany beat Argentina 2-0. However, we found that when we implemented this system, we had at least two significant problems we found. The first problem is that summaries sometimes reproduce factual details inaccurately. So, for example, it might produce the summary, Germany beat Argentina 3-2, here using the wrong score. So, as a pattern, we're finding that rare or out-of-vocabulary words are often getting incorrectly copied. The second problem we found is that the summaries often repeat themselves. So, you might end up saying the same two words over and over again, or perhaps just produce the same sentence repeatedly. This is a really common problem when you use RNNs to generate text, and it's seen in, for example, neural machine translation. So first, I'm going to tell you about our solution for problem one. The idea is that we're going to use a pointer to enable us to copy words more easily. So um, here's the idea. Instead of generating each of the summary words, we are able to point to them in the source text. So we might just point to the word Germany, generate beat, point to Argentina, point to 2-0. This is the best of both worlds, because you have both fine-grained extraction in the ability to copy individual words, and you can still abstractively generate. In more detail, what we do on each step is in addition to getting the attention distribution and the vocabulary distribution, we also generate PGen, or the generation probability. This is just a scalar value between zero and one. And the idea is that it interpolates between the two distributions. The vocabulary distribution tells us which word we want to generate, and the attention distribution tells us which words we want to point to and therefore copy. So using this switch, we combine the two of them together into the final distribution. As before, we just select whichever word has the highest probability in the final distribution to be our output. So on this step, that might be Argentina. And note that here, Argentina is chosen both because it has a high uh, probability of being copied and a high probability of being generated. So it's not a hard binary decision, it's a soft switch. By using the pointer generator network, we get some improvements. Like, for example, whereas before we might have had unknown tokens because of out-of-vocabulary words, after we're able to correctly um, copy these words. 
And whereas before we might be incorrectly substituting, for example, a number or a date with another one, afterwards we were able to copy it correctly. So our second problem was repetition. Uh, and to solve this, our solution is to penalize repeatedly attending to the same parts of the source text. The idea here is that repetition is often caused by the attention distribution repeatedly attending to the same things. So if we, present that, if we prevent that, then we prevent some repetition. So to do this, we use coverage, which is an idea from machine translation. Coverage is just cumulative attention, or the sum of the attention distribution so far. So the idea with coverage is that it tells you which parts of the source text has been covered. In our running example, the intensity of the yellow highlighting here tells you the coverage. So as the summary is generated, the coverage of the source text is built up. We use coverage in two ways to reduce repetition. Firstly, we use it as extra input to the attention mechanism. The idea being that if the attention mechanism knows what's already been covered, it can decide not to attend to those things again. Secondly, we also penalize attending to things that have already been covered. The idea here being that we add an extra loss term that penalizes any overlap between attending to something that's already been covered. So in this example, uh, it would be encouraged not to attend to these words that have already been covered in the summary so far. By doing this, we are able to reduce a lot of the repetition. And in fact, the, the rate of repetition is reduced to a level similar to that found in the human summaries. So this is a really effective way to reduce repetition. However, there is still a remaining limitation. Our summaries are still mostly abstractive. So here's an example from the data set. We can see the source text, and the yellow highlighting tells us the final value of the coverage. As you can see, the summary is mostly copying quite long sequences of text at the sentence or phrase level. It does, for example, leave out an extra clause in the first sentence, but on the whole, it's still mostly copying. So this is definitely the main area for improvement in future work, and I'm going to talk about this more later. Um, I'm going to go a little faster because I'm being told I don't have much time left. Um, so we have some results, some Rouge results. Um, the main story is that we man managed to improve on the Rouge results of the previous best abstractive system. However, since publishing, um, there's been an interesting result from Salesforce that found that they had two systems. One had better Rouge, but the other system had a better human evaluation score. So this has shown something that researchers have known for quite a long time, which is that Rouge doesn't always actually capture what we're interested in, which is actual summarization quality. So what's the reason for this? Summarization is quite difficult to evaluate because it's quite subjective. There are many valid ways to summarize. You have to choose what you think is important, and then you choose how to phrase it. By contrast, Rouge is based on a strict comparison to a reference summary. It's quite intolerant to rephrasing. You will not get any credit with respect to Rouge if you rephrase with respect to the human summary. So for this reason, Rouge tends to reward extractive strategies more than abstractive. Um, do you think I'll be able to go over time a bit? Well, I already, uh, we kind of allowed. Okay. And we can go into the questions again. Okay. So for example, it's quite well known that if you take the first three sentences as summary, the first three sentences of the news article and use that as a summary, then you're likely to get a higher Rouge score than almost any published system. This is quite a shocking result, but it's partially due to the fact that news article structure is written such that the most important points are put at the beginning of the news article. However, this isn't always true. Like in this example from the data set, we have a news story about a robot being used as a greeter at a Japanese department store. In this example, the first four sentences are actually pretty irrelevant, and the main point only starts in the fifth sentence. Our system knows to start summarizing with the fifth sentence. So even though often news stories do often put the information at the beginning, and this means that this first three sentences baseline gets pretty good Rouge scores, our system does know when to skip ahead. So uh, what's next for summarization? How do we make progress from here? So looking back, Extractive methods were, for a long time, the state of the art. And extractive methods do still represent a kind of safety. There's only so badly they can go wrong, and they're going to give you pretty reasonable output. However, what we're really interested in is, ultimately, achieving human-level summarization. And if we want to achieve human-level summarization, we're going to need to learn how to do abstractive summarization and do it well. We're going to have to learn how to climb Mount Abstraction. And this means we're going to have to leave the safety zone of extract of summarization. However, the danger here is that if you generate your own text, 
and leave the safety zone, you're also prone to fall into the uh, swamp of basic errors. So the problem with the swamp of basic errors is that you might make loads of mistakes because you're generating your own text, like, for example, generating nonsense or repeating yourself or copying things wrong. The problem with RNNs as a summarization method is that they often spend way too much time in the swamp of basic errors. This work has been about dragging RNNs out of the swamp so that we can do what we want to do, which is climb Mount Abstraction. So our system is, to be clear, still very much at the foot of Mount Abstraction. The summaries it produces are still very modestly abstractive. They tend to just extract sentences and maybe do some editing, leave out some unnecessary clauses, or perhaps stitch together sentence fragments. We still have a long way to go to climb the mountain. We need to learn how to do difficult things, like understand long text and paraphrase. So the question is, what innovations are needed to make this progress? How do we need to change the sequence to sequence system, or perhaps come up with a different system to do this? I'm not sure what the answers are, but I have some ideas. For one thing, I think we need to have a more high level understanding of the text. Currently, RNNs have a very local level representation, which is word by word. I think it would be easier to do more paraphrasing and more general understanding if we had a more high level or hierarchical understanding of the text. Secondly, I think we need to make the system more scalable because the sequence sequence system is already pretty strained by just 800 word articles and it's not going to um, scale to hold books, for example. Lastly, I think we certainly need better evaluation metrics because metrics tell us which way is up the mountain. Um, so thank you so much for listening to this uh, slightly haphazard talk and um, I'm excited to see where the research goes. Hey, nice work. This is Xiaodan Andrew from uh, Queen's University of Canada and National Research Council Canada. So we have an email exchange before. So we have a paper uh, uh, talking about similar problem in last year's International Joint Conference on Artificial Intelligence. And uh, I think, uh, so uh, it's not self-promoting here, but uh, uh, in your field, I mean, some of the problem you mentioned here, like re repeat, repeat per processing and also this is OV problems, also talking in that paper. So in today's talk, I think, uh, um, to give uh, some uh, more suggestion, what's the contribution of this work re with regard to previous core work? That's not very pr clear for me, if, at least for today's talk. Thank you. Yes. So um, the main two things that we do differently to the vanilla sequence sequence plus attention method is that we introduce the pointer and the coverage. And to be clear, neither of these are original contributions of ours. Both of these are things that have been augmenting RNN networks in a variety of applications, including summarization. So what we've done here is we've applied those uh, two things together and applied them to a fairly challenging data set, which is the CNN Daily Mail data set, which contains these long articles. And we've done uh, quite a lot of analysis analysis to see what kind of mistakes are made and why. And uh, if you check out the paper, then you can see there's quite a long discussion section which talks about uh, why these things are happening. So I hope that answers your question. Why don't we take one uh, more question while the speakers are exchanging for that? Yeah. Uh, okay, thanks for the great talk. So my question is, is there any analysis on what, can, what types of word are more likely to be pointer copied? Because from the intuition, it is more likely that those numericals or named entities should be copied more, but those functional words or those words that can be paraphrased should be copied less. Do you have any idea about that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, if you have a look at the paper and then look in the appendix, we have quite a few examples. And uh, we have a, a visualization which shows what the value of PGen, the generation probability, or the switch is for each word of the summary. So if you have a look at that visualization, you can see when the model is thinking it's a better idea to copy versus generate. So in general, uh, what we find is that it's mostly copying phrases, but kind of at the joins of those phrases, or for example, at commas or full stops, when there's an opportunity to switch tack and maybe uh, start summarizing something else or stick another clause on, that's when it decides to use the generation ability. Okay, thanks.